After more than 32 years of active service and eight years serving as Toronto Fire Chief, Matthew Pegg is hanging up his hat, announcing his retirement in October. For a look back at his incredible career and what's next, I'm joined now by Chief Pegg. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thanks so much. And congratulations. Congratulations are in order to serve 32 years. You must, you must have loved your job. It it seems entirely surreal mm -hmm. to me because it, it, it literally feels like yesterday that 32 years just happened. But I have not all days have been easy. There are days that uh, there are a few days I wish I could forget that I never will. But I have loved every minute. Let's look back. I mean, I think a lot of people knew your name in the headlines during the pandemic. Uh, you you were the face of outside of the mayor and Chief de Villa uh, or, or uh, Toronto Medical Officer Eileen de Villa. You were the voice. People were looking at you for answers, leading the city in this really confusing period. That must have taken a toll on you. You were very outspoken about mental health. It, that was like something I never imagined. There was never a moment that I ever imagined that I would be tasked to be part of the response, let alone to serve as the incident commander for a pandemic health emergency. But that happened and uh, it was the single biggest incident I ever responded to. I learned a ton. Uh, there are some days there that I mm -hmm. would like to forget too, but I, I had such an amazing seat. I got to watch, I had the ultimate front row seat to watch a city of more than 3 million people come together and create solutions out of nothing mm -hmm. and create what became Team Toronto. And it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. It was yeah. fantastic. I, I want to give you credit, and we've talked about this off camera, but your availability, your transparency with the media has made our job easier because sometimes um, that can be a block and you never made it that way. And so I wanna thank you personally because on several stories I know as a reporter, as an anchor and many of our colleagues, we said, you know, let's get to Chief Pegg. How is he feeling? What is he doing? And you've always made yourself available. And I think in turn, that helps us deliver a message to the public. So thank you for that. Well, you're welcome, but thank you right back because we don't get to tell our story without the good the good folks like you and all of your colleagues and uh, i believe from day one and it, it's actually proven to be true that that this at the end of the day really is a relationship and it's a relationship based on trust and i can't i can't and our organization can't expect that you and all of all of the media professionals are going to be there when i need them if i'm not prepared to do the same mm -hmm. so uh it's it's been a sincere pleasure and I, I'm, I'm just so proud of the organization and the fact that that we, we get to work with you to tell our story and to, to tell the, the more than 3 million people in the city that it's going to be okay, we got this. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the stories. Um, there are several that I'm sure stick out with you from earlier on in your career versus as interim chief and then eight years as chief. And as interim chief, one of the largest deployments or the largest deployment to a single fire incident was under your watch. And we're talking about the Badminton and Racquet Club of Toronto. This is February 2017. I'm just going to go over some of the stats here. And this is, you know, if you don't recall, it was around 10 million in damage. This burned for more than 20 hours, 19 million liters of water to extinguish this blaze. That's the equivalent of about seven and a half Olympic sized fire, uh, Olympic sized swimming pools and uh, about 230 Toronto Fire staff on scene. That is beyond significant. That is an understatement. So tell me in, in your shoes as interim chief at that time, what was that like? It was, the lar it was the largest deployment of resources to a single fire in the history of Toronto Fire Services. Uh, it's an interesting thing because on one hand, it is what the professionals that come to work on our job do every single day. Nothing was different. But of course, on a much, a much more significant and a larger scale, uh, daunting, daunting to say the least. Uh, I remember, I remember it well. It went, it went four days, but again, I, you and I are having the conversation offline. I remember that in the aftermath of that, one of the pictures that got shared with me was, despite all of that volume of fire and all of the challenge, there was a balcony in the adjoining building that had a patio umbrella, and that patio umbrella was still there. And I remember that that spoke to me because that was right there, proof positive of the job that our firefighters had done and the extent, you know, how well they had done this. And it just, there's a sense of pride that comes with that. Every time I get to stand in front of a camera and say there have been no reported injuries, that's what success is for us first and foremost. And there were no reported injuries at that fire. And uh, yeah, it's one I will never forget for it's sure. It's pretty incredible. Um, 
so that I'm sure there are incidents that you remember that way. Is there anything that you would change along the way, either as chief or mm -hmm. in your time in active service? I've thought a lot about that in the past uh, the past few days. Y you know, Melanie, the, I think the thing that if I when I look back, it has there's a cost to doing as much public engagement as I as I have chosen to do, and that I, I will admit that's been a choice, but. Uh, Every time, an average, an average week for me in this role, I would say between three and four nights a week, I'm out doing some kind of public thing. And that's, that's really important to me and it always has been. But those three or four nights a week are times that I haven't had to go and spend with the, all of the people that are on duty doing our job. So when I think back about that, I, I do regret the amount of time that I didn't get just to be one-on-one -on -one with you know the more than 3,200 people that do this job every day, but there, I had to make the choice, and I, I, I chose to I chose to focus on the the public aspect of our job, and I think that I think that our our job and the the people in it have appreciated that. Well, speaking of time, you're about to have a whole lot of it on your hands. <laughs> so come October, um, what is next for you? What are you going to do? I have no idea, <laughs> to be honest, and that's the first time in my life I have not had a plan. Uh, I'm not leaving for something else. This is a decision that Catherine and I made together about the, the right time. So my last day on duty will be Friday, October 4th. I have no doubt, Melanie, there will be career 2.0 for me, but I have no idea what that is. So I'm, I'm going to stay, I'm focused on, on the, I'll be focused on these duties until the end of the day on the 4th of October. And then uh, a little bit of, maybe a little bit of recovery time. Just a bit, yes. A little bit. <laughs> and then what comes next? I, I don't know. I'm excited to find out. I've got tons of energy. I've got all kinds of interests. And we'll see what happens. But uh, to be determined. We are excited to see. And thank you again, Chief. We'll be talking, I'm sure, over the next few For months. Sure. But again, a big congratulations from all thank of us you. here. Thank you. Thanks so uh, much. Chief Matthew Pegg again at the helm for eight years with Toronto Fire Services, uh, 32 years in active service.